Hi, everybody. Welcome to Projector Women in Business. Thank you so much for joining us. And of course, our absolute projector, our expert, in-house expert is April. <laughs> and she is here to share with us. Usually we try to make these recordings a little bit evergreen so that people can watch them anytime. But the truth is today is Valentine's Day. And so I wanted to say happy Valentine's to everybody. And I just had this amazing thought. Why don't I pull a Valentine's Day card? April, what do you think? Sure. Do you think Valentine's Day card is this something that we should do for all our projector friends. Sure. So for people who might be wondering because they're catching this on the replay, wondering what this is all about. April, can you share with everybody while I shuffle these cards, can you share with everybody a little bit about our mission and our purpose with this meeting that we have every month for projectors? Oh, probably about a year and a half ago now, um, there were four ladies, Power Lunch <laughs> members, were having a chat and um, all four of us are projectors. And we, we began to recognize that we were struggling with a lot of the same, same issues around being entrepreneurs. And that the more that we talked to other projectors who were also entrepreneurs, that some very similar things kept coming up and questions. If, if being a projector means waiting, for recognition and invitation, how do we become successful entrepreneurs? Because that means we gotta do something and not just wait. And so um, that, that key question, um, I think was what brought us together to say, why don't we form a group out of Ladies Power Lunch that is comprised of projectors um, who are trying to be successful in entrepreneurship and of those who are already successful to help do some guidance to raise the issues that that impact us and be able to look at how we can how we can really build a successful business and life for ourselves um, there are wildly successful projectors in the world Okay, that's the first given. They exist. And so we can be part of that grouping of wildly successful projectors. And so we formed this group to bring women together. We've got 111 members right now um, where we can have these conversations um, using our human design to help inform what we do and, and how, we, how we are, um, I think is the best thing. And, and also that, um, I think when we found the book that Evelyn wrote, Evelyn Levinson wrote, Becoming an Empowered Projector, it was like light bulbs went out on for all of us in different parts. And it's okay. We can be empowered. We need to empower one another. And who best to do it for each other than projectors? And so that's why we're here. And that's what we hope that you will, why you will join us and be become active participants with us. Beautiful. That was so well said. So we have we have been meeting before on a Monday, but I think we're mixing it up a little bit to see if we can if by changing the day we can get folks for whom a Monday might not have been an appropriate day. And so we're doing this now the second Wednesday of every month at 2 p.m. So folks can just mark their calendars. And of course, the invitation will be in the ladies Paul, in the Projector Women in Business Facebook group. So you can always join us from there. And the link is always going to be there. So no need to worry. Do I have the right link or anything like that? And we'll always post in the group to remind us meeting so oh my this is the invitation that we have been getting we have gotten from the universe today happy valentine's day 
your own hero. And I'm just mm-hmm. saying, not exactly that message is sharing with us. Believe that you're worthy of an amazing life. That's true, projectors. Believe it. You are worthy just by being here. You don't need to feel guilty or hold yourself back to make anyone else feel comfortable. You don't need to be timid or uncertain, worrying that you're becoming too much for someone else or asking too much from the universe. Living a great life is not about competition with anyone else. Living a great life helps inspire others to do the same. Inspire others to do the same. I think one of the things about projectors is that for many of us, our job is to actually be an example of living well. And so I I think this is so on point for us. Living a great life is not about competition with anybody else. Living a great life helps inspire others to do the same. It doesn't take anything away from anyone else. If your dreams both excite and scare you, that's a good sign. Give yourself permission to go for it. Go after what you want with a happy heart. Kelly, April, how is this resonating for you? That, for that, you? that is a, I mean, that is a perfect card. And particularly when, when I pull up what I want to share, um, because we do have, I and mean, we have a divine right, I believe, to choose the life we want. And when I look at human design, and you'll hear this in a couple of minutes, um, I believe that we were born perfectly designed, perfectly designed conditioning or life, because life is conditioning, gets in the way. And so then the work is to get back to that, to live that true, abundant and life that we're, we're, we are born to have. And that card just really just hit all of that today. How is this feeling for you, Kelly? Yeah, you know, the part about staying in your own lane and living your own life and um, putting the blinders on when it comes to what everybody else is doing and stop the comparison game is really big for me because Mm -hmm. um, I'm an ego art projected projector. And so I've got that willpower thing. And that makes me think that I can live a generator life. (laughs) <laughs> and um you know and that just bites me in the tush every time um you know and there's so many years just beating myself up for being such a lazy you know lump and uh that when I found out that I was a projector I just was rocked back on my heels and really internalizing that it was okay. Mm-hmm. I'm a trigger crier late, lately, sorry. Um, just realizing that it was okay not to have the energy. And mm-hmm. when that willpower started to fizzle that I didn't have to try to push through has been just, has been a really big thing for me. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. I think it's um appropriate. I just muted you, April, because something in your background is noisy, but you can unmute yourself as you desire to. Um, I think it would be a great idea for us to just introduce ourselves to the folks who might be watching, say who we are, what we do, and share a little bit about what our design is. So I'll start. Hi, I'm Dr. Davina Shepard. I am guilty of hosting Ladies Power Launch, and it's just a place for women in business who are looking for a place for community and a place where collaboration is the mainstay. It's the way we think. It's the way, it's our way of being. And so that's what I do. I am a 2-5 mental projector. So Head, Ajna, throat, crown, Ajna, throat, all filled in. And then everything else is just wide open, ready to be a projection field for all who step into, who choose to invite me to be in their space. Uh, April, 
are you? Okay, so um, I'm April Goff Brown, um, and I am my my projector type is with emotional authority and profile of six two. And I'm really happy to say I am in that role model phase of life. Made it through the, the mid one and um, uh, very happy to, to be in this um, walk the talk phase, the wisdom phase of life. And it's, um, it's, it's really wonderful um, to do that. Um, really was happy, I guess, to hear with the emotional authority about the emotional wave because I was one of those that um, I made a lot of impulsive decisions because my spleen is also defined and I listened to it better than I listened to my emotional authority. Um, and when I came to truly understand that, I've saved myself a lot of money by living true to my type. So. I am very happy about that, just in that phase alone. Um, and that's great. So Kelly, you're up. Um, well, I, as I alluded, I am a, a projector um, with only the heart and the G center um, uh, filled and everything else is open. So lots of generator energy absorption in my house. Um, which I'm in my attic hideaway where, where I can detach from, uh, from everybody and everything for a little while every day. Um, but uh, uh, I'm a 2-4, which means that um, having a hideaway is, is perfect for me. Um, but I do really like it when um, I get called out and get to go mingle with with my friends and stuff. And being a part of a couple of genuine networking groups um, is also really effective for me and lets me um, be out there. And it helps with the entrepreneurial thing as well. So, so that's me. And I've just been doing this since like last October. And so all three of us are have two lines. I saw that. Yeah. Um, and so we get what it's like to be in the third floor attic, <laughs> okay, having that attic room because, um, yeah, that's how I am with this room that I'm in uh, is my space, my space in the house that is a sanctuary. And you have a sanctuary as well, I'm sure, Davia. This is it. This is my office, but it's my office in my at my work, but it's like my space. Like nobody comes in here. It's okay. It's your space. My space. Excellent. <laughs> Great. Awesome. So April, because today's Valentine's Day, you had something really special prepared to share with us. And I can't wait to hear what that is great so because as i when i listen to things i'm visual so i have a few slides to share and um of course now because all right there it is now i can share it i wish there was a way to do this without that just flowed with all, instead of all the clicks. So here we are. Um, you are your Valentine. And that is what I prepared for us today with, and I, as I mentioned, the premise that I work from is that we were all born perfectly designed. And last year, I spent the entire year really studying the 64 gates within the design and follow them as the sun transited through each gate, read lots of material on them to, to really be able to internalize it. And I come from a place where things need to be practical and useful um, 
or they're not worth learning for me. And so what I discovered is that our human design is filled with abundance of self-love and honoring yourself. And that's what I want to share today. And just looking at some of the gates um, where it's pretty obvious um, some of them, it's like, yeah, it just smacks us in the head when we talk about self-love and self-care. And the other thing that I think it's important and we need to state over and over again is we all have all of the chart. We tend to only pay attention to our what's defined for us, but we do have all of the chart. And so it's important to then know certain things about other parts of the chart. Whereas most people we know about our type and strategy because they're hand in hand, we know our authority, we might know our profile. So even by the way we introduced ourselves today, we introduced ourselves with those things, type, authority, and profile. Um, we talked about, you know, be, where you're defined via you were defined up here. Kelly, you've got two centers defined. Um, and, but the depth of our design for me is inside the gates. And I've really loved them. So where I found um, self-love and honoring oneself, these are the, the gates and they, they change all the time on me, but these are the ones I landed on for today's presentation. We're gonna start with self-love itself. The gate 10 is the gate of loving oneself. Now, it can't get any more direct than that. It's right in our identity center, our G center. Um, we are designed to love ourselves, bottom line. And yet life is conditioning, life and conditioning can take us away from that because of what kind of messages we got from others, from the, where we might have grown up, the kind of community we lived in, um, especially happen when we get into those adolescent years when now we want to fit in and we didn't fit in because we're projectors and projectors really don't fit in. Um, so we we have these stories perhaps and there's stories throughout human design, um, but we need to learn how to truly love all parts of ourself. And it's nice to know that it's right there at the point of that arrow loving oneself is in every single person's design gate 55 is living in joy it's down there in the root center and when i see this i think of our friend via uh, marianne pack who is a ladies power lunch member who is the joy advocate of the world and yesterday she and i were talking and she says but my gate 58 is not defined so does that mean I had to work harder to find joy? And, you know, she was just really questioning the definition versus the openness. And knowing her story, and she agreed, she didn't always feel that joy in her life. And so the more that she was able to absorb joy from other people and to amplify it in her own life until she really began to understand what joy was. And now we don't see her as anything but a joyful person who absolutely is filled with joy and love for herself and for others. And so really, again, it gives an idea that it doesn't matter if it's defined or open, we all have this. But living in joy, we are meant to be joyful and we are meant to be love and, and love and joy are, you know, hand in hand, just like this. The third key one, is gate 40, which in quantum human design is called restoration. And the theme of that gate, and you'll notice I don't use quite the traditional names. What I've done is I've come up with key themes when the gate and the gates instead, honoring yourself. So loving ourself was in 10, honoring ourself is in gate 40. And what that means is, and it's really important, well, it's important for everybody, but when we look at projectors, recognize that we do need to rest. We are not generators. We need to honor that. And how we do that can be very personal. So I think self-care lives in this gate because when we look at restoration and coming back to ourselves, it's what kind of self-care practices do you employ to be able to do that? And there are, there's countless numbers of it, um, of different ways to do it, but choosing what works for you is a way of, of really continuing to grow the self-love and honoring oneself in there. How about
Gate 27, although it's a tribal gate and it really is looking outward towards others, when I think of it as nourishing with boundaries, I think of it as like this mama bird energy that we nourish and, and you know take care of. And like the mama bird, when she knows that her fledglings are ready to leave the nest, she gently pushes them out so that they fly and then they become independent. Well, we have to if we to love ourselves and honor ourselves, we need to have boundaries in place that allows us to nourish from the best of ourselves. If we only are completely selfless and we think of everybody and everything instead of ourselves as projectors with limited energy, our energy is going to diminish even quicker. And it's hard for us then to give the best of ourselves when we are depleted. So gate 40 with gate 27 kind of go hand in hand here is put boundaries in place to understand how far you can go. Where are you going to put your energy? This is part of loving yourself and honoring yourself. Now, Kelly, when you were talking um, and you were introducing yourself in the beginning, I see gate five is really a key piece of loving and honoring ourselves is to understand our natural rhythms. Okay, if it's an emotional wave, understand that that's part of your natural rhythm. If you need to go to bed at 10 o'clock and wake up at seven, which happens to be my best rhythm, um, that's your natural rhythm. Some of us have a real consistency to our rhythm. Others, our consistency is simply that we're not consistent, that we don't do everything at the same time every day. That's your natural rhythm. So honor that and appreciate that that is how you move. That is how you roar, if you will. That is your power is in your natural rhythm. Again, a place of loving and honoring yourself. Gate 52 is one of two gates in human design, which is around stillness. Gate 12 is the other. And I like gate 52 and I see it as the energy of taking time to be, which means, and it's in the root, which means allowing the pressure to do, to subside and honor yourself by giving yourself time to reflect, assess, and determine what's the next best action. Now, the three of us all happen to have those two lines, which it might be easier for us to do than some of the other profiles and types because that hermiting comes more natural to us. So we know it when it's time to, to step back. But for those particularly with an open route, that their to-do list never gets shortened. It, it's already got 100 things on it, and by the end of the day, it's got 125. Well, you know what? Take a look at that list and what is filling up your time that really isn't necessary and begin to cross them out. It's like the decluttering of your day begins by crossing out which what isn't really important. Um, so, I really love that this gate in particular because it's telling us along with restoration is take time to be separate from yourself, get that eagle eye view on things, um, allow yourself, if you're to allow yourself to hermit and um, to restore. 857, intuitive clarity. One of the things, and again, we all have all of the chart, is every single one of us has intuition. It's whether we choose to listen to it or not. And intuition, being in the spleen, uh, the spleen center, is also about keeping us safe, keeping us protected. And so when we look, when we override our intuition by rationalizing or letting our mind get in the way, um, and all of that, we're really denying a key part of ourselves. Our intuition is exists in every single one of us, and we don't want to override that. We need to pay attention to it because it's there as a protection. Um, and so one of the things in learning to love yourself and honor yourself is to really start to pay attention in understanding your intuition and how it works. So, got a few more. Gate one, right from the get-go, the very first gate in human design is all about authentic self-expression. Self we need to be ourselves. We need to live ourselves. We need to talk ourselves. We need to know ourselves. And that can be 
challenging for a projector when we are designed to know others better than we know ourselves. And yet it's really important that we do know ourselves and be able to express ourselves authentically because that is going to help us in business with gaining the recognition because we begin to talk about as as the authority, as the expert in what it is that we do. And we do it authentically expressing who we are. And so again, knowing ourselves, honoring ourselves can only help us grow business-wise. Gate 46, Authentic Embodiment talks about the same thing. It is about walking your talk. It is the closer you become to your authentic self when you're embodying what you say, can only help attract more clients to you. And I truly believe that. So we need to make sure that we are being as authentic as possible. It's a great Valentine gift to give ourselves. Now, the last two gates I put together and they're kind of a how, because as I mentioned, life is conditioning and it takes us away from who we are. And there is story or narrative in human design and gates 13 and 33 are two of those story gates. And I think of them as first listening with the heart and we listen to others with our heart, sometimes better than what we listen to ourselves with our heart. What are the stories that we tell ourselves? What are those limiting beliefs that lock us from being able to reach the full abundance of who we are? And understanding that the experience, yes, it did happen, is our interpretation factual or is it clouded by emotion or what other people have told us? And it's most likely the latter. And so when we look at gate 33 is how do then we reassess and reframe our narrative so that it goes from a limiting one to becoming an empowering one? Because every one of our stories can be switched it can go from a limiting belief to an empowering belief if we have courage in our hearts to go ahead and do the work. When I was preparing this, I pulled a card um, and it had a lion on it. And the lion is a symbol of courage and it was having courage of the heart. And so if we can have courage within our hearts to listen fully to our stories and find out or do the work to reshape them, we can, we can move into becoming an empowered individual um, that, again, honors um, who you are. So one, one thought, one exercise, and anyone who is interested, um, about a month and a half ago, I was talking with Evelyn Levinson, and she had gotten this exercise and it asked, you know, for me to try it and give her some feedback. And so if you know EFT, it's a simple tapping exercise using your two fingers and just gently tapping your heart center. And while you're doing that, it's four words. That's all, four words. I love you and your name. That's all you have to say while you're tapping and to say it to yourself out loud and repeat it to you. And what I have found in my experience is that the tone of my voice changes from saying, I love you, April, which is just, you know, like a sentence to the point that when I've done it, it comes out, I love you, April. And you can hear the tone of the voice doing it. So if you're struggling with self-love, and self-empowerment, it might be worth trying to do this. It only take, what, 30 seconds, anytime you wanna do it during the day. When you start to think bad about yourself or unkindly, start and tap your heart to be able to can really fill yourself up with love. So remember that you have all of the chart. You were born perfectly designed in abundance, self-love, honoring yourself lives in your design. Conditioning can diminish your abundance. It doesn't have to because you have a divine right to choose to reclaim it. And with that, happy Valentine's Day. So that's what I see in human design around self-love. And so your reaction, your thoughts. So um, I thought that was beautiful. And I think it's a great reminder that we all have all of the chart. But as you were presenting, I pulled up my, my chart to see, okay, do I have that gate or do, do I have that? Do I have this gate? Do I have that gate? And some of the gates that you mentioned, I do have, but because my chart is so open, 
a lot of the gates that you mentioned, for me, they are undefined. And so can you say again, when we have those gates defined, how our approach should be and how it should be different for those of us who are undefined? I think it's, I'm not sure that it's a should, it's when it's defined, we can bring, give that energy outward easier. When it's open or undefined, you are going to absorb that energy from those around you, from the environment around you, and you're going to amplify it. And so um, you are, you think of it, you know, in, in context of your family, is that you absorb the love that they give you and you end up amplifying it until it becomes internal and part of you because you and so you have all the gates you don't have them all defined okay and so it's you're absorbing and amplifying it so that you can can and when it's happening you begin to feel that now every year every single gate is lit up for us in where the sun transits through the gates and so when gate 10, for instance, is lit up for the six days, um, it's a time where you can experience that energy, maybe a little bit easier, you get a taste of that energy easier than you would be, you know, otherwise. The other thing to be aware of is that part of the astrology part of human design is um, these life cycles. And so whether it's the Uranus opposition or around age 50, it's the Chiron uh, return. But every year around our birthday, we have a solar return. And so all of a sudden, Earth gates come right back to where they are at birth. The rest of the gates may change. And so you have the ability to access that energy maybe a little bit easier than you would otherwise. And so it's more about accessing the energy. And so sometimes when people are, we feeling depleted, we might wanna hole up in our little space and be all by ourselves, but we might need to think about, is that the best thing for us? Or do we need to go somewhere where there's some energy flowing around us to see if we can bring some of that feel good energy into us because we're so open that we can, we can receive it. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a really good point. Yeah, it, it definitely makes sense. I like it. Yeah, so you do have all of the gates. It's a matter of the definition of the gates. And I guess this the definition is what makes you you. Okay, because we, when we talk about human design, we talk about as the science of differentiation. So your configuration is what makes you uniquely you. And those are the energies that we tend to focus on the most. Um, but we do have all of this in our chart. It's being able to access it. And so sometimes it might be that's why someone might go to uh, a retreat a self-care retreat so that they're building up the reserves to be able to learn how to do it or find practices that feel natural to them that they can institute in their lives that continue to build that self-love and honoring of the self, okay? Um, so there are different ways that we can access it um, because it's there. Sometimes it's just silent and very quiet and it's how do we, how do we wake it up? How do we nudge it around to wake it up so that we can we can feel that part of our design more readily? How is this hitting for you, Kelly? Um, yeah, it's uh, you know, it's funny because um, I've been looking into my gates and trying to make sense of them. Um, and a lot of my gates have to do with um projecting love and unconditional love and it's the other yeah it doesn't, it doesn't it's not me it's it's me bringing it and putting it out and everything and so i've been trying to well i mean it's just kind of thrown me because it's 
um, I've been just trying to figure out, well, what does that mean? How does that translate into, um, you know, what I have been doing, what I could be doing, what, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and like, um, and like the doc, I don't have most of those um, that, that you had talked about. So, and it's always been, I've always been interested. I don't really have that many gates. There's lots of duplications. Um, right. So I, uh, yeah, I've always wondered what it, what it meant to not have them defined and, you know, how that, what that translated. So let me just clarify with you. So when you say that they're not, when they're not defined, um, that means that you are open to that energy and projected outwards because when it's there, I'm, I'm sorry, I guess I am a bit confused still about when so you the projecting outward is the way I, I look at this is, is that when it's you're projecting outward when it's defined, when it's open, you're absorbing and amplifying. So when we talk about our centers, for the most okay. part, the centers that are open, you are absorbing that energy from elsewhere, and then we amplify it. It's then trying to figure out what is yours and what is someone else's. So that becomes the right. work of the open centers. And so think of it with the gates is that if you've got, um, you don't have, if you have the opposite of gate one, which gate, I think it's one and eight that creates the channel. So if one is defined and eight is not, that that hanging gate, you might be um, seeking. And again, this is all, subconscious, unconscious, it's just part of the energy um, blueprint that you are seeking that eight so that it can be a complete channel. Um, and if you don't have those gates to find, finding someone, you know, in your life, or even that's in an environment where you are that has it, mm. you might be able to borrow that energy, you're bringing it into you. So mm. you've mm -hmm. got so much more up. And, and, when you have only like you've got two gates that are defined, two centers that are defined, it's like a lot of reflector energy, which they're just absorbing all the time. And so the environment yeah. becomes really, really, really important to them. And so it, it may be the very same thing with you is so that you've created this sanctuary for yourself, which is private me only, because you've got to be mm -hmm. able to sort out all the stuff that you've absorbed from all those generators that you mentioned you've got to be able to sort it what's mine what's not what's mine what's not what do i want to keep because it feels good what do i need to let go and that's what you're doing is you're restoring yourself right okay does that make sense yeah, yeah it does yeah i was definitely even doing that before i even knew about human design right um right i would <laughs> there would be times that i'd say okay I have to walk away for a little bit from this, you know, and it's not necessarily a bad situation. It was just, you know, life going on around the house. But I just be like, I need to step away for a little bit and go hide. That's what I used to call it. I'm like, it's time for mom to go hide. I'm, I'll see you later. <laughs> and I'd have, you know, I'd have to do that. So yeah. um, it was just intuitive. Yeah. To kind of and I, and to download some of it. Yeah. Great word. The intuitive part. I think. Many of us know or knew who we were, how we were. We may not have felt that it was good enough because we weren't like other people. Some of us, mm -hmm. I mean, my theme song when I was 16 was a song called If I Had Wings. And it's all about being very independent. If you don't like me, well, just too bad is, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and I believed it, but there was also a part that it was kind of a protection kind of thing. Well, if you don't like it, well, that's just on you. I'm fine. I don't, you know, so we, we couch or cloak ourselves with that. Um, but breaking that down to really feeling like it really is okay. Learning as a projector in business that we all believe we have wonderful product wonderful service you know we can help a lot of other people we can guide people we know this coming to terms with but it's not for everybody i think was the hardest thing for me is that it's only for the people who invite us in 
to do the work with them, um, that it's not if you build it, they will come mentality. Um, I really struggled with um, mm -hmm. for and I still every so often, but I have to remind myself as a projector is that I'm not for everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm not for everybody. I love that. And you're not for everybody. And, you know, you're saying that. And I just pulled up my my very dear friend. She's like one of my closest friends. Um, I pulled up her chart. And I'm looking at like the gate 10. And she has, she has the gate 8. I have the gate 1. I don't have the um, gate 10. Um, she has the 33. And so it's interesting because she is my go-to person for anything to do with self-care. She's also self-projected projector. So anything to do with self-care. So we go to the gym together. We go to the spa together. And like, she's the one who reminds me, hey, you need to put it on this. You need to put you on the schedule. Like she is constantly reminding me to do that and it's interesting that I have in a way seeked her out to be that person for me to get that energy from because somehow somewhere deep inside I knew I didn't have those gates like I, I just I'm not built right. that and, way but I knew that I needed that mm -hmm. from the and, outside. and you do I mean you are I remember having to remind you that you're not a manifester or a manifesting generator, that you are All a projector. <laughs> and so to have this friend that does that for you is like, yay for you. Because we had that about almost about a year and a half, two years ago, we had that conversation. And yeah. yay for you that you've, you've got that because it's so important. You know, that gate 40 is in everyone's design. We have to restore. The will center is work to rest. We all have a will center. We have to honor the idea of resting. Okay, so it's there. Um, and it's it's becoming aware of and reminding ourselves of those key pieces that the better we are for ourselves, the better we are for those that we love and the better we are for our business. Yeah. And I think, I think one of the things that I am coming to appreciate more is that in my effort to do more and be more, and I'm actually not able to do more and be more. It's such a conundrum. It's such a catch 22. I continue to live with a generator and a manifester and I continue to try to be that in my life and that's not who I am so like yesterday was the snow day and it was glorious for me to be able to have some downtime and you know I need more of that I need more of that yeah so let your projector son lead you there. I mean, your reflector son. Reflector, yes. Right, yes. let him because, you know, if you're struggling, just think how he's struggling. Yeah, and I I want him to, see, he's trying to keep up with his manifesto brother and I mm -hmm. keep trying to pull him out. So it forces me to get downtime because I pull him out to say, hey, time to rest. This is great. This was learning. fun. Learning. This, this was I'm fun so to look at. I'm so glad able to share all of this with us, April. This is amazing. Because I very often don't focus as much on the gates. I, I'll focus in on my channels. I'll focus in on my defined centers. But the gates... <laughs> So this there's, there's a lot of depth in them. There is. Um, there really is. is. It's a, it, and, I was blown away when I started digging into mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot there. There is. There, is. there definitely is. I And I just when you, you were talking about that gate four and gate eight situation, I was like, yes, 
makes perfect sense. So yes. well, beautifully yes. done. Thank Wanna you. certainly thank you, Kelly, for joining in today. Oh, and I want to invite I'm all our members to come join us when we have our next meeting. What date is our next meeting? It I is know. March is it the 19th, 19th, the 13th. 13th. Okay. March 13th, the second Wednesday at two o'clock Eastern. And who knows what we'll have planned for then. It's going to be glorious, no matter what we end up talking about. It'll be lucky number 13. So I think people should definitely tune in and join that conversation. April, as always, your, your knowledge of human design continues to blow me away because I have been down rabbit hole after rabbit hole and I've had readings and readings upon top of readings and every time I talk to you I still learn something new so this is great thank you for sharing your appreciate gifts that thank you with us and I'll see y'all next month bye folks good. Bye. happy valentine's happy valentine's <laughs>